May 5, 1806, on the bank of the Salinadi rivulet at Shankhu, Maharani Raj Rajeshwari Devi, the Queen Consort of Nepal burnt alive on a funeral pyre. Historians believe that the Queen was forced against her will into practicing the ancient ritual of Sati. Sati Pratha A tradition that cast a long, dark shadow over Nepal's history. A practice where widows were forced, or compelled by societal norms, to sacrifice their lives on their husbands' funeral pyres. But where did this terrifying tradition begin? How did it evolve, and what finally brought it to an end? Today, we'll uncover the chilling history of Sati Pratha in Nepal. The origins of Sati Pratha are deeply rooted in Hindu mythology. The practice is named after the goddess Sati, who self-immolated to protest her father's disrespect toward her husband, Lord Shiva. This act of burning oneself was originally seen as an ultimate act of loyalty and purity. However, what began as a voluntary act of devotion soon evolved into a widespread and coercive practice. In Nepal, the first recorded instance of Sati Pratha dates back to 464 C, as noted in an ancient inscription. Over time, this practice was embraced by the royal and warrior classes, becoming more entrenched in society. In Nepal, Sati Pratha was not just a ritual, it was a reflection of the deeply ingrained caste system and societal expectations. It was seen as the ultimate proof of a woman's loyalty, especially among the higher castes. The practice was particularly prevalent among the royals and warriors, where it was believed that a widow's immolation would elevate her family's honor. But for many women, this act of devotion was far from voluntary. In 1806, Queen Raj Rajeshwari Devi of Nepal was reportedly forced into committing sati. Such stories are tragically common in Nepal's history, including the horrific event in 1674 when nine wives of King Pratap Malla were burned alive on his funeral pyre. As the horrors of Sati Pratha became more evident, resistance began to build. In the 19th century, social reformers in Nepal started to challenge the practice. One of the earliest efforts came from young Bahadur Rana, who in the mid-1800s, implemented reforms to limit the practice. He banned Sati for women under 16, those who were pregnant, or those with multiple husbands. However, it wasn't until July 8, 1920, that Prime Minister Chandra Shumshe Rana took the final step to abolish Sati Pratha in Nepal. His decree not only outlawed the practice but also established severe penalties for anyone who tried to enforce it. Although Sati Pratha was abolished over a century ago, its legacy still lingers. Widows in Nepal continued to face social stigma and isolation, long after the practice was banned. But there were many women and widows raised a powerful voice against the oppressive norms. In the early 20th century, they led a movement advocating for women's rights and challenged the social injustices of that time. The abolition of Sati Pratha was just the beginning of a broader struggle for gender equality in Nepal. Today, the rights of widows are protected under the law, and there is ongoing work to empower women and eliminate the lingering prejudices against them. <laughs>